I'm Mark Halley and Mr. Saltwater Tank coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Now that you've got your budget saltwater tank up and rolling and you've got some fish in it, it's time to talk about keeping it clean. Now what about using some cool critters in your saltwater tank to help you keep it clean with no effort on your part? They actually exist and they're called cleanup crews. Cleanup crew I say? Yep, that's what they're called and you'll see them abbreviated as CUC for short. A cleanup crew's job is to do what their name implies. They clean up your saltwater tank by crawling or slithering around your tank, scavenging on the things they find. That is, uneaten fish food, fish poop, and algae. Here's one thing they don't eat. Cleanup crews are not a threat to healthy fish in your tank. A healthy fish can easily get away from a cleanup crew member if the cleanup crew member even paid any mind. And most cleanup crew members could care less about the fish in your tank. You may see a hermit crab wave a claw on a fish as it swims by, but that doesn't mean that the hermit crab is trying to kill the fish. Now make no mistake, if the fish is on its last fin or it's dead, then the cleanup crew member is gonna be right there to do its cleanup crew job. But that doesn't mean that that cleanup crew member killed that fish. Cleanup crews are not a threat to healthy fish in your tank. Cleanup crews are made up mainly of invertebrates and occasionally even fish. Let's focus on the invertebrates to start, and first up is the avoid list sea hares, nudibranchs, and lobsters. They may look cool, and they can either nuke your tank like sea hares, or they don't live long like nudibranchs. My experience with lobsters is that the owner always regrets having them, and good luck trying to remove it from your tank. Now that those guys are out of the way, onto what should be on your purchase list. Crabs. The most common of these is a hermit crab. A crab that lives in a shell that it doesn't make. Yep, these guys can't make their own shell houses, so you have to provide it for them. Pro tip, add empty hermit crab shells or empty snail shells of various sizes to your tank. These empty shells will be used by hermit crabs as they outgrow their old shells. If hermit crabs don't have empty shells to move into, they can murder snails to take their shells. More on snails in a bit. Hermit crabs crawl around your tank scavenging for leftover fish food, fish waste, or anything dead in your tank. There are lots of varieties of hermit crabs and I like to mix it up. I'll add a couple of each type to keep things interesting. Make sure you add hermits of various sizes as the big boys can't get into small nooks and crannies to clean things up. Emerald crabs, a crab that can build its own shell and is good at cleaning up things in your tank. Not only do they scavenge for leftovers, they're also known to eat bubble algae. Arrow crabs, a strange looking creature that is an eye catcher for your tank and I avoid them. Sally Lightfoot crabs, these are too big for my taste so I avoid them too. Of all the crab types, when you're new to saltwater tanks, focus on hermit crabs. They're easy to find at your local fish store or online. They're hard workers and a lot of fun to watch in your tank. Starfish, nocturnal workers that always delight. Serpent and brittle stars are the best picks. Linky and Ephromia stars should be avoided as they rarely do well in a saltwater tank, especially in the hands of a newbie. Serpent and brittle stars will hide during the day, but come out at night to crawl around your tank scavenging for food. One to two is fine for most saltwater tanks. Shrimps. These guys are quick movers and are fun to watch. Peppermint shrimps will spend most of their time hiding while fire and cleaner shrimps will show themselves during the day. Pro tip. Despite its name, a cleaner shrimp hasn't been proven to remove parasitic diseases like ick and marine velvet from fish. If you're thinking having a cleaner shrimp will keep your fish from getting sick or cure your sick fish, you're mistaken. Get a cleaner shrimp because you like having one in your tank. The cleanup crew members I just talked about are all scavengers. Their job is to cruise around your saltwater tank and eat uneaten fish food and fish waste. Now there is a whole different set of cleanup crew members and their job is to eat algae. Snails, they move slow, but they work hard. The best picks for snails are Australia snails and banded trochus snails. I found the Sarah snails don't do much, so I avoid them. The Sarah snails live in the sand bed and these guys don't eat algae. They scavenge for leftover fish foods, waste, and even dead fish. I love these guys and I use them in my tanks. Fodder conchs also scavenge for food and they're fun to watch as they have the eyes that extend far beyond their shell and they have an elephant looking trunk thing that searches for food. Sea urchins, algae eating machines. Super cool to watch in your tank as well. The best ones to pick are tuxedo or pincushion urchins. Avoid the long spine urchins. While cleanup crew members are cool critters and they're fun to watch in your saltwater tank, do them a favor and don't add them to your tank until you have fish or algae in the tank. The cleaner crew's member's job is to clean things up, and if they don't have anything to clean up, then they're not going to have any food and they can die. 
Hermit crab, starfish, and necessary snails can all go in when you have fish. But should you feed your cleanup crew? You could and there's no need. Cleanup crew members are scavengers, so as long as there's fish and algae in your tank, there'll be plenty of things for them to eat, especially if you don't overstock on your cleanup crew. That being said, what is a good cleanup crew for this budget build? For the budget build, here's what I put in as a first round cleanup crew. Keep in mind, these guys only went in once there was fish in the tank. Five hermit crabs, one serpent starfish, 10 empty snail shells of various sizes. That's plenty to get started. Once some algae started showing up in the tank, I added five banded trochus snails. In time, I'll add one fire shrimp or a cleaner shrimp to each tank. That cleanup crew lineup may not sound like a lot, but most saltwater tank hobbyists overstock their cleanup crews. If there's no food for the cleanup crew members to eat, then they'll die and you would have wasted your money. To give you a sense of scale, for a larger tank like my 448 gallon tank, here's what I'd put in for a cleanup crew. 40 hermit crabs, three serpent starfish, 30 astraea or banded trochus snails, 40 nasaria snails, two cleaner shrimp, two fire shrimp, one tuxedo or pincushion urchin. Once you've got your cleanup crew to your place, drip acclimate them for 20 to 30 minutes. Drip acclimating them is easier on you and them. If you don't know how to drip acclimate livestock, watch the acclimating fish video in this budget build series. Pro tip, plan on restocking some of your cleanup crew every four to six months. While serpent and brittle stars and sea urchins are known to live for a long time, it's my experience that hermit crab numbers dwindle in time and need an occasional bump. I love what cleanup crews do for a saltwater tank, and here's a fun tip for you. Once your tank's lights are off, have a look around your tank. Certain starfish and some types of snails only come out at night, so when the lights are off, you get a whole nother viewing dimension for your tank. I'm Mark Callian, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. I'll catch you in the next episode.